Good evening to the common folk out there. Welcome to today's halftime report of Coach Henry and his team's valiant effort against the horde of Harry Percy's Rebel squad. Coach Henry's keys to success. Uh, his son, Hal, the fallen prince, has battled through much during the first half, putting up 10 points despite immense disapproval from his father, a weak performance from his winded teammate Falstaff, and a strong rebel force. Based on his performance, Prince Harry could be MVP of the game after breaking many ankles out there on the court. However, until Hal can confront and defeat Harry Percy, there seems little chance Coach Henry will be able to maintain his reign over Hudson Valley Regional Basketball. Prior to the game, much shade was thrown to Harry Percy, the team captain of the Rebels. We have seen throughout the first half Prince Henry show up and refuse to let the talk from Harry Percy throw him off his game, despite the loss of key players like Blunt. The talk continues even on the court. We have seen an enormous amount of this smack talk back and forth from each side, causing a nearly unbearable amount of tension that's likely to boil over in the second half. The Rebels are currently ahead by two, but I expect a big matchup between the once depraved Prince Harry and the always honorable Harry Percy, making for a dramatic and thrilling second half. Stay tuned for more updates here at Shrewsbury. Lancaster out. Time out. I prithee, Harry, withdraw thyself. Thou sweatest too much. Lord John of Lancaster, go you with him to the locker room for an interview? Not I, my lord, unless I did sweat too. I beseech your majesty, make up, lest your retirement do amaze your friends. I will do so. My lord of Lancaster, lead him to the locker room? Come, my lord, I'll lead you to your tent. Lead me, my lord, I do not need your help. And God forbid a shallow sweat should drive the Prince of Wales from a court such as this, where stained nobility lies trodden on and rivals arms triumph in massacres. I breathe too long. My duty lies this way in the booth. Good luck. Oh. By God, thou hast deceived me, Lancaster. I did not think thee lord of such a spirit, but before I loved thee as just a reporter. John, but now. I do respect thee as a soul. I saw him hold Lord Percy at the point, with lustier maintenance than I did look for, of such an ungrown baller. Oh, this boy lends metal to us all. Another coach, they grow like Hydra's heads. I am Douglas, fatal to all those that wear those colors on them. What art thou that counterfeits the person of a coach? The coach himself, who, Douglas, grieves at heart. So many of his shadows thou hast met, and not the very coach. I have two boys. Seek Percy and thyself about the court. But seeing thou fallest on me so luckily, I will essay thee, and defend myself. I fear thou art another counterfeit, and yet in faith thou bearest thee like a coach. But mine I am sure thou art, whoever thou be, and thus I win thee. Hold up thy ankles on the court, vile Scott, or thou art like never to hold them up again. The spirits of Valiant, Shirley, Stafford, and Blunt are in my arms. It is the Prince of Wales that threatens thee, who never promises but he means to pay. Truly, my lord, how fair is your grace? Sir Nicholas Gauze hath for a sucker sent, and so hath Clifton, all the Clifton straight. Stay, and breathe a while. Thou hast redeemed thy lost opinion, and showed thou makest some tender of my life in this fair rescue thou hast brought to me. O oh God, they did me too much injury, that ever said I hearken for your death. If it were so, I might have let you alone the insulting hand of Douglas over you, which would have been as speedy in your end as all poisonous potions in the world. 
and save the treacherous labor of your son. Make up to Clifton. I'll to Sir Nicholas Gauzy. If I mistake not, thou art Harry Monmouth. Thou speakest as if I would deny my name. My name is Harry Percy. Why then I see a very valiant rival of the name. I am the Prince of Wales, and think not, Percy, to share with me and Gloria any more. Two stars keep not their motion in one sphere, nor can one court brook a double reign of Harry Percy and the Prince of Wales. Nor shall it, Harry, for the hour is come to end the one of us, and would to God, thy name and arms were now as great as mine. I'll make it greater ere I part from thee, and all the budding honors on thy crust I'll crop to make a garland for my head. I can no longer brook thy vanities, bro. said Hal, to it Hal. Nay, you shall find no boys play here, I can tell you. has robbed me of my youth, I better brook the loss of my brittle ankles than those proud titles thou hast won of me. They wound my thoughts worse than thy dribble my bone, but thoughts, the slave of life and life's time fool, and time that takes survey of all the world, must have a stop. Oh, I could have, I could prophesy, but that thy earthly and cold hands of death lies on my tongue. No, Percy, thou art dust and food of For worms, brave Percy, fare thee well, great heart. Ill-weaved ambition, how much art thou shrunk, when that this body did contain a spirit, a kingdom for it was too small a bound. But now, not two paces of the vilest court is room enough. This earth that bears thee dead, there is not alive so stout a gentleman. If thou wert sensible of courtesy, I should not make so dear a show of zeal. But let thy favors hide thy mangled ankles, and even in thy behalf, I'll thank myself for doing these fair rites of tenderness. Adieu, and take thy praise with thee to heaven. Thy ignominy sleep with thee in the grave, but not remembered in thy epitaph. What old acquaintance cannot all this flesh keep in a little life? Poor Jack, farewell. I could have better spared a better man. Oh, I should have a heavy miss of thee. If I were in much love with vanity, death had not struck so fat a deer today, though many dearer in this bloody fray. Embowed will I see thee by and by, till then in blood, by noble Percy lie.